Welcome to Caffeinate Math. Today, we're going to try to make sense of the normal distribution and z-scores. This is part one. The normal distribution, also known as the bell curve, is a very foundational part of statistics. But some people, when they think about the bell curve, they get a bit spooked by it. But it's really not so scary. It's actually quite cool. So let's go check it out. There is a lot of data in the world, and we are always trying to make sense of it. We make pie charts, bar graphs, scatter plots, histograms, and line graphs just to be able to see it or visualize it. Now the histogram is especially helpful when we want to see how data is distributed or spread out. For example, this one shows the different heights in a group of women. It looks like most women in this group are about 65 inches tall. You can tell just by glancing at it because it's the biggest bar on the graph. Conversely, you can tell that there aren't very many really short or really tall people because, well, those bars aren't so big. So if one of these women walked out of a room, she'd most likely be between 63 and 66 inches tall because those bars fill up the most area on the graph. Let's look at another one. In this graph, we're looking at a group of dogs and how much they weigh. You can see that most of the dogs in this group weigh between 41 and 65 pounds. Those bars fill up most of the area. If one happened to run away, it would likely be one in this weight range. Let's look at just one more example. In this final situation, we have a class of students and the grades they earned. Hopefully you know by now what I'm going to say. Most of the students earned a C and we know that because that bar fills the most area. If you picked a student at random, you'd be least likely to get an A or an F student. So I hope you've been hearing me say a few words over and over again. Area and likely. The more area means something is more likely. Less area means something is less likely. In general, we could say that area tells us about probability. And this is where the bell curve comes in. While it's not perfect, you can see this shape. And any data that looks like this, well, we say it's normally distributed. So, okay, why do we need a curve when we have the data right there? Well, we don't always have all of the data. But when we know that the data is normally distributed, then we can still calculate the area under the curve, and therefore we can estimate probability. So let's get to know the normal curve a bit. The mean, median, and mode are all represented right in the middle. We normally just work with the mean, which is represented by the Greek letter mu. Mm, think of a cow with a French accent. Under the curve is 100% of our data, with 50% on this side of mu and 50% on this side of mu. In addition, okay, watch this. If you go one standard deviation on either side of the mean, you'll end up encompassing 68% of the data. Two standard deviations on either side covers 95% of the data and three standard deviations on either side covers 99.7% of the data. This is called the empirical rule, and it works for any normal distribution. But here's the problem. There are an infinite number of normal distributions floating out there in the universe with different means and different standard deviations. Calculating the probability for every single data set would be a nightmare. So some really smart mathematicians thought, if we could have just one bell curve, it would be easier. And somehow any other bell curve that came along would just point back to that one. So that's what they did. They developed the standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Then they could figure out the different points on the curve and their associated probabilities. But now the problem is, how do all the normal curves point back to this one? This is where the z-score comes in. 
This simple formula can take any point on a normal distribution and standardize it to what we call a z-score. And then we use this score to find the area and then the probability via the standard normal distribution. So I'm going to stop there for now. Thank you for joining me in this introduction. If you want to know how to use the z-score, I'll cover that in part two.